Pregnancy is a great thing that involves the biggest miracle of all, the birth of a It is mind-blowing how a life was created through a fertilized egg. This image shows the journey from a fertilized egg to a full-grown fetus. Unfortunately, when it comes to childbirth, it is not as wonderful as the media portrays it. There are far more complications that impending mother or fetus can experience, and one of them include preeclampsia. The following video will go in depth about this implication that mothers experience. Preeclampsia, also known as toxemia pregnancy, is a complication during pregnancy as a result of placenta malfunction. The main function of the placenta is to provide babies with adequate amount of nutrition. The mother's blood is filtered for harmful substances through the placenta before it goes to the umbilical cord and into the baby. Within the blood supply, the baby can obtain glucose, oxygen, and other nutritional substances. The placenta also ensures the baby's waste product enters the mother's circulation to get filtered out of her body. This organ is vital and determines the wellness of the baby. If the organ fails to function properly, it can lead to great disasters in the pregnancy process. Preeclampsia does not only affect the mother, but also threatens the life of the fetus. This complication in pregnancy is a leading cause of maternal death. It not only threatens the mother, but also the fetus. Statistics show that about 10% of all pregnancies worldwide are affected with preeclampsia. In Canada, about 25% of mothers and 50% of fetuses die from this maternal condition. To give you a further understanding of preeclampsia, it manifests itself as hypertension, which is high blood pressure, proteinuria, which is protein leak in the urine, and edema, which is swelling during pregnancy. It is usually diagnosed in the presence of trophoblast tissue that make up the placenta. The fetus does not necessarily need to be present. Most women are diagnosed during the 20th week of pregnancy. Although this condition mainly affects the placenta, this abruption can lead to malfunction to the mother's kidney, liver, and brain. Affected newborns may be born with devastating conditions such as blindness, deafness, and epilepsy. Both mother and infant are also at increased susceptibility for developing hypertension, cardiac problems, and diabetes later in life. Preeclampsia can lead to eclampsia, which is the same thing but it also involves seizures. Unfortunately, there is no cure to preeclampsia other than giving birth. When a woman is pregnant, her body goes through several transformations and it becomes hard to differentiate between normal symptoms versus severe symptoms. Patient awareness of the warning sign is one of the most important tools available to help women receive the care they need. Preeclampsia has a vast amount of symptoms and in some cases it does not have any symptoms. This makes the condition extremely dangerous because mothers won't see it coming. The three main signs that a pregnant woman experiences preeclampsia include high blood pressure, swelling, and protein in the urine as mentioned before. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, is an important sign of preeclampsia. The disease is sometimes referred to as a silent killer because most people can't feel their blood pressure going up. If the blood pressure exceeds 140 over 90, medical attention is recommended. During pregnancy, a rise in the lower number, diastolic, of 15 degrees or more, or a rise in the upper number, systolic, of 30 degrees or more can also be a cause for concern. The following diagrams show the difference in blood flow of patients with preeclampsia versus patients without preeclampsia. The blood flow is constricted in preeclampsia patients compared to other pregnant women. This results in less blood flow to the fetus and high pressures in the arteries of the mother. Protein in the urine, also known as proteinuria, is another huge red flag for preeclampsia since this condition temporarily damages the kidneys, which is a filter part of the body. This condition can be diagnosed through a urine test, which will be shown later on in the video. Swelling, also known as edema, can also be a great indicator for this complication as it causes accumulation of excess fluid. Although mothers do experience a certain amount of swelling during pregnancy, if there is extra puffiness in the mother's face, around her eyes, or in her hands, it can be a concern. Other than these signs, there are several other symptoms that include sudden weight gain over one or two days, abdominal pain, especially in the upper right side, severe headaches that are migraine-like, a decrease in urine or no urine at all, excessive nausea or vomiting, hyperflexia, which are strong reflexes, shortness of breath, and dizziness. 
As mentioned before, protein in the urine is a key indicator for preeclampsia. A dipstick is used in a urinalysis to detect for albumin, which is a type of protein. There should be around 300 to 500 mg per day at normal circumstances. The following video is going to demonstrate how to conduct a urine analysis to check for protein. Red blood cell. Normally, proteins are too large to pass through the filtration membrane. However, if the kidneys are damaged, perhaps because of injury or trauma to the area, or because of a bacterial infection, or poisoning by heavy metals, this filtration membrane can be damaged to the point where proteins can leave the blood and then enter the filtrate. High blood pressure can also cause protein to be present in the filtrate and thus in the urine, causing the dipstick analysis to show a positive protein reaction. By visiting the Preeclampsia Foundation website, you can hear about many stories of mothers who have experienced preeclampsia themselves, such as Ashley, who wrote about twins and beating death. Dr. Aneth Karamachi, Associate Professor of Medicine at Beth Israel Diakon's Medical Center and was from Harvard Medical School, has conducted research about this condition and here's what he has discovered. His laboratory has identified SFLT1, which is soluble FMS-like tyrosine kinase 1, an antagonist of circulating vascular endothelial growth factor, also known as VEGF, and placental growth factor, also known as PLGF, from pleocamptic placentas and has confirmed that it is released into the bloodstream in vast excess in patients with preeclampsia. Exogenous administration of SFLT1 into pregnant rats reproduces a phenotype of preeclampsia, namely proteinuria, hypertension, and glomerular endotheliosis, the usual effects caused by preeclampsia. Work is in progress to understand the regulation of SFLT1 production by the cytotrophoblast of the placenta. Dr. Aneth and his team are trying to find the effects to testing the antagonizing excess of SFLT1 with growth factors and small molecules in animal models of preeclampsia to find good treatment options for this disease. Additionally, they are currently characterizing other gene products that are elevated in preeclampsia, such as soluble endoglin, and which may be synergistic to SFLT1 in the pathogenesis of preeclampsia. With this bark, the first step has been taken, a process called extracorporeal removal of excessive SFLT1 from the blood. In the pilot study by Professor Ravi Thandani, a colleague of Dr. Aneth at Harvard Medical School, working with nephrologists and obstetricians in Germany, showed that a single treatment of five pregnant women with preeclampsia lowered their elevated levels of SFLT1 in their blood. Repeated treatment of three additional patients with preeclampsia in the early onset of pregnancy could reduce not only SFLT1 but also proteinuria and stabilize blood pressure without apparent adverse events to either mother or fetus. The obstetricians were able to prolong pregnancy during thus allowing the delivery of healthier babies. Dr. Karamachi stressed that further studies are necessary to determine whether this intervention safely and effectively prolongs pregnancy and improves the condition of mother and child. Although researchers are finding ways to overcome this implication, it is still very important for people to become aware. It can save a life, especially because preeclampsia can sometimes show no signs. It is better for a woman to get tested regardless if they experience symptoms or not.